Today we're gonna to be making not one, not two, but five different hummus recipes. So Robin and I have hummus all the time, but because the store-bought versions usually have so much oil added to it, we like to make it ourselves whenever we can. We always have it as a dip with veggies or with crackers. We spread it into our sandwiches or into our wraps, and sometimes we put a big spoonful onto our nourish bowls. But because we have it so much, we do try to vary it up. That way we don't get tired of it. So today we're gonna share a classic recipe first to start with, then we're gonna start to vary things up. And the breakdown to each of the recipes can be found on our blog. The link is in the description box below, but for now, let's just dive into it. First up, we'll make the classic garlic and lemon hummus. To a food processor, you just add one and a half cups of cooked chickpeas, a quarter cup of water, the juice from one lemon, two tablespoons of tahini, which is a sesame seed paste, a tablespoon of olive oil, two cloves of garlic, and a pinch of salt. A common question I get asked is where to find tahini. Usually I get it from either an Asian supermarket or a Turkish or Persian shop, but if you can't find it from any stores in your neighborhood, you can always make tahini yourself at home as well, and it's really, really easy to do. All you need is to roast some sesame seeds, add it to a food processor, then blend it for at least five minutes until it's really creamy, and that's it. We have a recipe for this on the blog as well, so link is in description. Going back to the hummus recipe, the only step that's now left is just blend it up, stopping to scrape down the sides as needed. So now comes the taste test part. This is where we can add any spices and see what the consistency of it is like as well. Some people like their hummus a bit more chunky. I personally like it when it's a bit more smooth. This one actually looks really quite good. But if you do also like it smooth and you wanna know how you can do it, one way is just blend it for longer. Some people stop blending after just a minute or so. Personally, I go for like three to five minutes. Another way to also make it creamy is to just add some more tahini, which is my personal preference because it's a whole food fat source. Or you could also add olive oil. That will also do the trick. For presentation purposes, you can create a spiral out of the hummus using the back of a spoon and then add some garnishes to it like some fresh pomegranate seeds or some ground cumin or sliced fresh basil leaves. This is the most versatile recipe of all of them, so modify it however you'd like. And because it's a classic, it goes well with pretty much anything, crackers, veggies, nourish bowls, and more. Next, we're gonna make a roasted garlic and roasted red pepper hummus. We're gonna first cut open two red bell peppers and remove the seeds, and then cut these in half again and put it onto a baking tray. We'll also cut off the top of a bulb of garlic and drizzle on a little bit of oil and work to coat the bell peppers evenly before popping it in the oven to bake at 400 Fahrenheit or 205 Celsius for 25 minutes. You can stop once at the halfway point to give the bell peppers a flip, and when it's cooked and slightly charred, remove it from the oven and let it cool. And as a little tip, if you don't wanna roast your own bell peppers, you can save some time by using some canned or jarred roasted bell peppers instead. So once the bell peppers have cooled off, I just peel off any of the charred bits that are on here. And one of the things that I love about roasted garlic as well is that it's just, it's so fragrant, but also it's not as potent as raw garlic when we use it in our recipes, which means that we can use more of it. So to a food processor, we'll add two cups of cooked chickpeas, the roasted bell peppers, six cloves of roasted garlic, or about half of the bulb, three tablespoons of tahini, one lemon, juiced, one tablespoon of water, one tablespoon of olive oil, two teaspoons of balsamic vinegar, half a teaspoon of paprika powder, an optional half a teaspoon of Cajun powder, and half a teaspoon of salt. Then blend the mixture on high until it's as creamy as you like it. And to plate it up here, we just topped it with some oven roasted chickpeas and some chopped roasted bell peppers. We sprinkled on a bit of ground cumin and paprika as well for a pop of color. It's a perfect dip for when friends come over to visit and it's also a common one that we use when making our own wraps for lunch or dinner. It's guaranteed to be a hit. Next, we're gonna make a golden lemon turmeric hummus. For this recipe, I like to roast the lemon. I think it gives it a deeper, more charred, lemony flavor, but this is totally optional. If you don't have the time to do this, just squeeze in a fresh lemon, it's totally fine. We're just gonna cut it in half crosswise and then place it face up onto a baking tray and broil it. We wanna broil it until the lemons are lightly browned on the top or just bake it in the oven at 475 Fahrenheit or 250 Celsius for about 10 minutes. Then to a food processor, we'll add two cups of cooked chickpeas, the juice from the roasted lemon, two cloves of garlic, a quarter cup of tahini, a quarter cup of water, one tablespoon of olive oil, half a teaspoon of ground turmeric, an optional quarter teaspoon of curry powder, and a pinch of salt. 
then blend it until it's creamy and watch the turmeric give this hummus its beautiful yellow color. For presentation purposes, we plated it, garnished it with roasted lemon slices, roasted cherry tomatoes, roasted pine nuts, and some sprouts. This one pairs incredibly well with some toasted bread or crackers. Next up, we're gonna make roasted beetroot hummus. I absolutely love beetroots. It's probably one of my favorite vegetables, and when you roast it, it becomes more sweet because it gets caramelized, so it's not as earthy as it usually is. It works really well in hummus recipes, and it just gives the hummus such a beautiful color. So we'll first peel two medium beetroots and then slice them about a centimeter thick. Add it to a baking sheet and bake it in the oven at 350 Fahrenheit or 180 Celsius for about 45 minutes, stopping to flip it once halfway. Then we're gonna let it cool, and to a food processor, we'll add one and a half cups of cooked chickpeas, the roasted beetroots, a quarter cup of water, the juice from one lemon, two tablespoons of tahini, one tablespoon of olive oil, two cloves of garlic, and a pinch of salt. Then we're gonna blend it and watch that beautiful fuchsia color emerge. And to plate this one, I just sprinkled on black sesame seeds, roasted sesame seeds, some more sprouts, and lemon wedges. My favorite way to enjoy this hummus is to just spread it generously onto some toasted bread, top it with some avocado slices, it's just the combination is a match made in heaven. And if you have some sprouts or arugula to top it with, even better. Last but not least, we're gonna make this pea edamame and mint hummus. So unlike the previous recipes where we used chickpeas, this time we're gonna be using protein-packed green peas and edamame, which is what's gonna give this hummus its lovely green color. So to a saucepan of boiling water, we'll add one cup of frozen shelled edamame and one cup of frozen green peas and let it cook for about three minutes or according to the package instructions. Then drain it, rinse it under cold water and add it to your food processor along with the juice of half a lemon, three tablespoons of tahini, three tablespoons of water, one tablespoon of olive oil, two cloves of garlic, a teaspoon of ground cumin, half a teaspoon of salt, and 10 fresh mint leaves. The mint in this particular recipe is not overpowering at all, in my opinion. It just gives it a really nice, fresh flavor. But if you aren't a fan of mint, just start with less and you can add some more later if you'd like or just omit it altogether. Once it's all been added to the food processor, we can blend it until it's as creamy as we can get it. But this dip does come out a bit more chunky than the other recipes naturally, but that's something I like about it. To plate it, we're gonna top it again with some roasted sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, pine nuts, sliced radishes, and some mint leaves. In addition to enjoying this one as a dip, you can also generously spread it onto some toasted bread, top it with some sliced radishes maybe, maybe some sprouts and a little sprinkle of sesame seeds for presentation and call it a day. So there you go, five different hummus recipes, each with their own unique flavor profile, but you can enjoy all of them in pretty much the same way. Link in description to get all of the recipes for all of these different hummuses. Hummai, hummuses. Anyway, we're gonna go and dig into this now and enjoy. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, it always means a lot when you give it a thumbs up. And Pickup Line signing off. We'll see you in the next video. We spread it, we spread it into our hummus. We <laughs> charred bits that are on these sweet potatoes. Whoops, they're not sweet potatoes. As soon as <laughs> Peel it off the sweet potato, folks. Optional, if you wanna just freeze, squeeze in a fresh lemon instead, that'll work perfectly fine. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Do you wanna freeze? I usually, no. <clears throat> but it's, it's what's, but, 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 but. We are instead going to add protein packed green. You're so rude. Right, so there you go. <laughs> <laughs>